Hello everyone and welcome to the final video of my International Space Station Assembly Series in Kerbal Space Program for Realism Overhaul. This is the launch of the Beam Module on uh, Falcon 9 inside the Dragon's Trunk. The Beam Module is tucked in there. The Dragon is from Tundra Exploration. This is what the Dragon from Tundra Exploration looked like in 1.3.1, which is the version I am in. Remember this series began in 1.1.3, so it's been a long time. <laughs> and. Uh, and finally, this is getting done. The rocket is from KK Launchers Pack. And unfortunately, we have a little bit of lag here. This was, of course, live streamed as with uh, the rest of this series. And this time, we get to use Canadarm for the first time in a while. Canadarm 2, actually, the one on the station, to grab the module from the trunk and place it in its correct location. And there we go. Separation of the first stage. I didn't uh, go through the landing procedure. Uh, that is a thing that we can do. I've got a landing script for it, which I used on the DM2 video, but this time I didn't, even though the first stage did reserve the fuel for a return to launch site there. Somebody in the comments mentioned that the music was a little bit distracting. I know because of the way I cut this up, the music doesn't always mesh together properly, but it's bundled with the game audio, and also I've got the credit playing at the top, so it's a little bit complicated. I can't just like mute the music and then put some other music in the background because then I'd be giving the wrong credit at the top there because this was during a live stream and I wanted to make sure to credit the pe people who created the music since it was available for use, uh, mostly from OC Remix or from soundtracks. But yeah, so that was sort of a rub and uh, judgment call. Anyway, here we have Dragon Free though, the decoupling was a little bit awkward. I tried to get the parts from the newer version of Tundra Exploration into this version, but it turns out that the newer parts do require modules that are only available in uh, more recent versions of Kerbal Space Program and just don't work in 1.3.1. So uh, no chance on that, though I did think about it and try it. Uh, that did not work out. So we were stuck with this one. I did take the opportunity to deorbit this stage, though I, I didn't put RCS thrusters on it, unfortunately, so we were just relying on the fact that it happened to be pointing in vaguely the right direction and it was good enough to uh, deorbit it. And so there it goes. Second stage is disposed of. That nose cone, unfortunately, is actually in orbit and will stay there unless we clean it up. And off go the solar panel covers, and here we go with the solar panels. You can see the beam module tucked in there. And this beam module is from Keem, K-E-A-M, with dots in the middle. Um, I had to resize it, and also after this video, I recolor it. Uh, it was a little bit too yellow and dark, so I went in with, uh, brought the texture into Photoshop and just lightened it up a bit for the DM2 video, so it's lighter in there. So here we are approaching the International Space Station. Unfortunately, the RCS thrusters on this Dragon don't visibly puff, so we can't see them working. And that's just a configuration problem. And I don't think I'm gonna bother with fixing that since I'd rather just figure out how to get everything into 1.8.1. The model of the International Space Station loads in 1.8.1. Unfortunately, the beam module doesn't have textures. I think there's some change to Textures Unlimited that messed up the textures on it or something like that. So I'll look into how to fix that, but it basically turns out all purple. Uh, that color where the game can't find textures. So, yep, uh, the B module actually needs to be fixed in 1.8.1. And that is just one of the little problems with this space station in 1.8.1 when I tried to bring it into that install. So here we go, Canadarm 2, first use in years. <laughs> uh, originally placed on the station in 1.1.3, and it's been years since I've tried to use it, so I'm literally trying to figure out which of those servo controls matches which axis, really. Because just because it says roll, pitch, and yaw doesn't mean that that's what the direction it's doing, and because our orientation is different. I sort of accidentally take advantage of the fact that, that it is currently the same vessel as the station as it clips in there, but we don't really want to do that. And on that note, of course, in order to get this to clamp onto the station on this end, we are going to have to release the other end. That's important and dangerous. 
And so I get the little actuator or uh, end effector as parallel to the side of Unity as possible. Keep in mind that this Unity is from the old Community ISS pack and I have no idea how its colliders are right now because between the time that this module is made and now, the whole rule about all colliders needing to be convex was implemented and this might have concave colliders so uh, it could have messed up colliders and I was worried about that so I saved and I heard the click that in the case that it did actually uh, latch on to the module. On the other end of Canadarm there's a grapple fixture so it can permanently dock. If I uh, so I release from that grapple fixture and there's no grapple fixture on Unity right now so it's just on the module itself and I double check I turn the ma magnet off and on to make sure it's properly on there and start moving it but if I try to time warp right now it would just fly off because unless the arm is on one of those grapple fixtures it's not really permanently affixed to the station as you can see in the resources up there it's got electric charge but it doesn't read the resources of the station because it's not really docked to the station at all and so it would fly off. The electric charge is in that probe core. You can sort of see behind the uh, servos, uh, disjointed servos, because Infernal Robotics did that. I don't know. But yeah, so the probe core is what's really controlling the arm right now and providing the electric charge for a limited amount of time, right? We, it'll, it'll eventually run out. Uh, hopefully, it will be done by then. That said, this whole process of getting, and of course, we have to separate off the beam module from Dragon in order to be able to grab onto it there. Even though we're not docked to the station, it was sort of like the same part maybe. Maybe I could have grabbed onto it, but it didn't seem like it. It's complicated. I was about to say, this whole process of trying to place the beam module took about three hours. So it was almost basically real time. Uh, it takes a long time to do this Canada arm stuff, which is why I used the tugs. Uh, for the more recent module placements, especially because handing off from Canadarm to Canadarm 2 was just a whole annoying process. Uh, this just grabbing beam is an annoying process. You can see the timer in the left to give an idea of how long things are taking between cuts. But remember, of course, we're in yellow time, so it's longer in real time than it is in game time, too. So here... We are trying to grab onto it. And ultimately do. So now we need to bring it up out of the thing without hurting anything. Actually, it's not a huge deal whether we hurt the dragon or not, because it, you know, it's going to be disposed of, to be honest. I didn't put parachutes even. So. It will be disposed of. Uh, let's not use the B module as a battering ram. Yeah, it wiggles a lot. And actually, at a certain point, I needed to just take a break because it was wiggling, and I need I, I needed a break anyway after moving the arm and trying to figure out which joint was what. So I just let it be and let it stop wiggling so that I could continue. You can see. Uh, this wiggle right here too, combined with the lag, which is somewhat annoying. Thanks to the lag, you can get pallet-induced oscillations, if you will, meaning that I I am compensating in the wrong direction, and I have to be careful about that. So I have to wait a little while for it to stop wiggling. Otherwise, I'll just make the wiggle worse. Okay, so we're trying to put it on there, you can see the sort of awkward bend the arm has to do here. And we have to constantly adjust that so that it can reach properly. NASA's got all sorts of people planning this sort of thing and doing all sorts of training for it, uh, the exact movements making it look a lot better than it does in the game. I don't, I had to just figure it out on the fly here. That probably added to the amount of time it took. Okay, well, 
The thing is, I don't know at this point whether I can just dock it straight or whether I need to act, let go of the B module in order for it to dock. So I get it as close to the docking port as possible, as lined up as I possibly can. I checked whether it was actually docked, I went to the B module, but the B module is its own craft right now. And it was not docked, so I decided to save. And then I'm gonna let go of the B module from the end effector there. Magnet off. And then right there it seemed like the B module docked. So I decided to back the arm off and see if it was really true. Very, very slowly. And... Well, there's another way of checking. We can switch craft. This is the station. You can see all the resources in the corner. This is back onto Canada Arm 2. You can see by the electric charge. The beam doesn't have electric charge on it. So, yes, it is docked, it seems. So, now we have to get the arm back to its docked position at that grapple fixture, because otherwise it would just fly off. So, during time warp, I mean. So we are very carefully aiming at the grapple fixture, which at least we can target, so that's helpful. Much better than anything else. I should really put gra more grapple fixtures around, but of course, more grapple fixtures are more part count, and more part count is more lag. So th there is a downside. Uh, we really ought to just, you know, move the grapple fixtures, have two grapple fixtures and like move them around where we need them with uh, Kerbals on EVA or something like that. So I get the arm out of the way, you know, undock it from the Unity side and make sure it's sort of poised for later action. And then we inflate beam. So there we go, there's a nice little inflation animation from the Keem mod. This version of the Keem mod was for 1.3.1. I think it got combined with another mod later on. So for more recent versions, I think it's uh, part of some other mod, so you might uh, see that on the forums. Anyway, uh, so that basically wraps it up. Again, Dragon we just disposed of. I didn't bring it back down, so I'll skip it burning to pieces, though I'll give it a nice departure from the station montage or whatever you want to call it. With that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.